you are here because you want to know how to beat the brand new Grandmaster Nightfall, the PsyOps Cosmodrome Battleground, in the easiest, safest, most efficient way possible. Obviously, the strike itself isn't new, but it is very new to the Grandmaster Nightfall playlist. So I'm going to show you exactly what loadouts you should run and the easiest way to get through it, all the strategies, all the tips, all the tricks to make your run super, super easy. So first things first, we have a solar and stasis surge. So I'm going to recommend weapons based on those elements. We also have barrier and unstoppable champions. Now, I know when people see Barrier Unstoppable, the first thing they think of is Polaris Lance along with the new seasonal mods. However, I tried out Polaris Lance in this GM and I found that I really didn't like it very much. What I found worked absolute best is the Wish Ender with built-in anti-barrier and very, very nice long range damage able to one-shot barrier champion shields as well as an unstoppable hand cannon for the unstoppable champions. I know this means you're on double primary. However, the Wish Ender does plenty of damage to feel perfectly fine. Some of you might think that Arbalist might be a better situation in this slot. However, uh, I like the Wish Ender better for its infinite ammo. Trust me, you're definitely gonna want the Wish Ender over the Arbalist. As far as the heavy slot goes, I like going with rockets. You can run any stasis or solar rocket to match up with the 25% surge or if you don't have a good stasis or solar rocket, you can run any rocket. You'll miss out on that surge, but you'll still be perfectly fine. As far as uh, weapons go, I like having one to two players run the unstoppable hand cannon. However, I don't think it's necessary for all three players to have it. That's why you'll notice that I, instead of running an unstoppable hand cannon in my energy slot, I'm running a disorienting grenades, grenade launcher. There's a lot of sections in this GM where this can be really, really helpful to shut down a lot of the knights and wizards from being able to attack you. It just feels very, very nice. You don't really need all three people with unstop. As far as subclasses go, I recommend bringing a minimum of one invisible hunter. I like Omnioculus the best for the ability to make your allies invisible as well and get all of that energy refunded back. But if you prefer something like Six Coyote or Graviton Forfeit, that can work okay as too. Uh, as far as subclass loadout goes, only real important things here are Trapper's Ambush, Vanishing Step, Echo of Obscurity, Echo of Persistence, Gambler's Dodge, and making sure you're on Deadfall Tether. The rest is kind of up to you, whatever you want to run. Harvest and Starvation are what I have, but like I said, it's up to you. As far as my other team composition recommendations, for this particular guide, I'm actually running with two Celestial Nighthawk Hunters. Celestial Nighthawk just speeds this thing up big time and feels really, really, really nice. Um, so we're going with two for this run. However, if you want to go the safest route possible, I would probably recommend bringing one Invis Hunter, one Nighthawk, uh, one Nighthawk Hunter, and maybe a Warlock with Phoenix Protocol Well of Radiance to have maximum well uptime. Or if you're just looking to blaze through this thing, uh, Nighthawk Hunters, having two Nighthawk Hunters in conjunction with your one Invis Hunter feel really nice. So we're going to do two Nighthawk Hunters for this guide specifically. Only real important thing on Nighthawk is that you have Golding on Marksman. The subclass setup is up to you. I can leave a guide down in the description below on a good Nighthawk Hunter build guide if you're looking for something like that. If you want to flesh out the rest of your fragments and aspects, that'll be linked down in the description, as well as my invisibility uh invis uh hunter omnioculus build guide as well if you're looking for a dim link to copy those over um if you are bringing a titan titans are definitely the worst class for this um however if you do insist on bringing a titan i think solar throwing hammers would probably be your best bet although i highly recommend you stick to the hunter and warlocks for this one if you're just going for the one clear so with all that out of the way with your loadout set let me go ahead and show you how to do this to absolute perfection. But real quick, let's talk about a setup upgrade that you deserve. When I was a console gamer, I thought PCs were just a fad, but after 10 years of gaming on one, I have never looked back. With a PC, you just get way more storage space, significantly higher frame rates, and much better performance. So why not treat yourself to a Starforge system? The best PCs in the universe, built at premium quality and with a full two-year warranty. Head to my link in the description to go buy yours now so you can thank yourself later. To start the GM, you're gonna walk out here and all you're gonna do is focus exclusively on the barrier servitors. So we're just gonna plink away at them with our wish unders. Obviously you're not gonna really be able to damage anything else because the barrier servitors will make them immune. If you're the disorienting grenade launcher player, you can also throw in a couple of disorienting grenades into the mix and it'll make it so the rest of the enemies won't really shoot at you, won't really throw grenades. Even if they are immune from the effects of the barrier servitor, you'll still be able to uh, go ahead and hit them with disorienting grenades. They'll still get disoriented. They won't to shoot at you. If you're having trouble getting an angle on these barrier servitors, you can come over to the left where I am, where I'm kind of behind this crate right here. You will on occasion have some enemies push you to the left, uh, but they're typically enemies that are pretty easy to kill. Skywood, thanks for the gifted sub while recording this, by the way. 
going to go ahead and finish off all the enemies. And then as the Invis Hunter player, I'm going to go ahead and push the payload by myself. The other two players in my team are going to stay back as far as they can and blink away at enemies from a distance. This is where having the Invis player comes in huge. There's a couple other areas in the strike where it also comes in massive. Uh, but this is the first that you'll see very early on. Having an Invis Hunter is absolutely awesome. So I'm just going to sit here alone. As you can see, it doesn't really matter if there's enemies in my path. It, it still can, it pushes it no problem, even if there's enemies nearby. And I'm just going to sit here and continue to push it until it gets to 33%. I want to stay kind of towards the back of it, because if I step too far up front, I'll get hit by that brig and it'll insta-kill me the same way that a uh, Cabal Meteor would insta-kill me. I learned that the hard way, uh, so you know, just trust me. Once we spawn that brig, I'm then going to back up and join my teammates and start plinking away at some of these enemies that are a little bit closer. And then once we take care of them, we can start focusing, uh, start to focus exclusively on the brig. Also going to have some Vandal Snipers that spawn kind of where the brig is, so you definitely want to take care of those if they reveal themselves, because they do hurt a great deal. So we'll just plank those guys down, and then we're going to go back to focusing on the brig. Once we get the brig to 50% HP, of course, that is going to unlock its crit spot. And around this time, assuming that your Nighthawk Hunter has some decently high intellect, they should be getting their super around this time. Uh, if that is the case, you can go ahead and just pop the Nighthawk and instantly one-shot the brig. Um, so boom, right there, there's a Nighthawk Hunter. Takes care of the brig just like that. We're about two minutes, 45 seconds of the way in, and we're already blasting through this thing pretty quickly. And once you kill that brig, you'll see a barrier servitor that will spawn kind of far off in the distance. You'll go ahead and chip away at it with your wish enders. Favorite thing about wish ender here is that they punch out the barrier shields. It feels absolutely fantastic. Once you go ahead and kill that barrier servitor, you can send the invis hunter back in to go ahead and continue pushing the payload. Now, your two other teammates here, at this point, they can kind of just follow you from a very far away distance and plink away at some of the adds as they see fit. Um, what they definitely don't want to do is potentially hit the explosive shanks that will end up spawning when they're right next to the Invis Hunter as they are trying to push the payload. Now, as the Invis Hunter, if you're not as experienced on Invis Hunter and you're not as great at timing your cooldowns and juggling your cooldowns, that's completely fine. If you notice that you're getting a little bit low on your invisibility cooldowns, you can just kind of leave and go back to the beginning of the arena. Um, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You can kind of let your Invis cooldowns work their way back up and you'll be completely okay. Uh, as you work your way over here, you'll start to run into the crawl. I can hear that there's some explosive shanks kind of on my tail, so I'm gonna kind of walk away from these thralls briefly. So I can get some of my invis energy back, get a, enough for a dodge, and then I can continue to push the payload until I hit about 83%, where it's gonna full stop and start to spawn a bunch of hive enemies. Now for this section, you wanna avoid the roof completely because if you have even one player go on this roof section that's directly above me, what it will do is it'll spawn wizards and high boomers on this tower and they will respawn infinitely even if those players that were on the roof leave the roof. So a better spot that I like to do is just kind of come very far out to this right side and plink away at these enemies from here. Obviously your teammates who were kind of hanging behind you, they won't be able to get in here quite as easily. So you're just gonna kind of blink away at the enemies from range uh, while they start to slowly work their way in as you as a team start to whittle away on some of the ads. So we're just gonna try and chip away. At this point, there should be very few enemies up so they can probably make their way in here and join me. Once you kill the last enemy, you're going to get two unstoppable ogres and the shriekers are going to come to life you want to instantly nuke the shriekers as fast as humanly possible because they definitely do a significant amount of damage once you nuke both shriekers you're then on to killing the unstoppable ogres if you want to you can play a little bit further back than i was and completely ignore the shriekers and just kind of let the ogres walk into you take it a little bit more slowly but if you want uh to pick up the pace on things a little bit more then you can Play a little bit more aggressive with those shriekers than the ogre. Once you kill everything, you're gonna run up here and literally spawn trap the next wave of enemies that spawn right here. You're gonna get some champions, an unstoppable ogre, a bunch of barrier champs, and you're gonna get the hive wizard. But as the Invis Hunter player, all you gotta do is plop your tether down right there. It'll literally chain to every single thing that's in there and you'll be able to nuke the Hive Champion, you'll be able to nuke that Barrier, you'll be able to nuke the Unstoppable, everything will die at the snap of a finger. 
And you definitely want to make sure you do it a little quickly because behind you, while those enemies are spawning about five seconds afterwards, you're going to have another barrier champion, a hive knight right here, as you can see. Um, so you definitely want to keep an eye out for them. So if, if, if you feel like you don't have the rockets or you feel like you don't have the team coordination to get ready to instantly spawn kill these guys, um, then you might want to play a little bit more front to back. Um, like I recommended previously for the first wave where we had the Shriekers and Ogres, you might want to play a little bit more back here. It'll definitely take you a little bit longer, um, obviously, but it'll be a little bit safer. However, it's not too difficult to coordinate your team to be ready to instantly kill all those guys. All you have to know is that once you kill the very last Thrall of that initial Shrieker and Unstoppable Ogre wave, just have all three players right here ready to go. Have your Unstop players with their Unstop shop ready to go for when the Unstop spawns. Have your Tether player instantly pop the Tether down. And then if all of you just shoot a couple of rockets and uh, do all that good stuff, then I mean, everything will die in the snap of the finger. Once you get to this room, like I said, I do kind of recommend having one Well of Radiance Warlock for this room because it feels really, really good. You can just pop the Well of Radiance at this door and it makes things pretty safe. In our situation, we don't have a Well of Radiance, but I think you'll see that it still ends up being pretty fine. Number one thing to note for this room is that you can sit at this door and come into this tunnel at any point. You are not trapped in this room by any means, and that is the number one thing to recognize because uh, if you just try and play in this room enemies spawn at all corners of it they flank you from all sides and it's very difficult to stay alive in here this room is also where the disorienting grenade launcher comes in handy big time there's a lot of these boomer knights that'll mess you up and having this disorienting grenade launcher up uh, will kind of neutralize all of them and make your life a lot easier uh for this room this is where you really want to take advantage of your supers and just kind of use them on cooldown. So if you have Nighthawks available, you want to stun those unstoppable ogres and just sauce them with the Nighthawks. If you have Tether available, you want to be dropping your Tether quite uh, quite frequently. And if you're in a situation where you're a Well of Radiance Warlock, then you want to be using that well for the turn quite frequently. So this entire room is going to go by a heck of a lot faster if you're just spamming supers on repeat. Um, obviously spamming the supers will create a ton of orbs which will allow your other teammates to get their supers and that'll let you just get through this a lot more quickly spamming golden guns spamming tethers spamming wells um, you need three total uh captured lights that will be dropped from the hive purifiers and in between each wave you will need to go ahead and take out a bunch of enemies so that you can eventually get the purifiers to spawn as you can see i'm doing a bit of a mix between coming into the room a little bit and killing enemies versus hanging back and playing at the doorway. Um, as the Invis Hunter, you are allowed to do that because you have Invis cooldown, so you just need to make sure that you're being particularly careful that you're not getting caught out in this room, because uh, if you're the only Invis Hunter, then it's going to be really difficult for your teammates to come and get you if you die somewhere deep in the room. So if you want to play it super safe, um, it'll take you a little bit longer, um, but it can be a little more reliable if you're just playing at this door the entire time and be a little bit more patient as the enemies come into your line of sight to kill them. So we got some new champions up. We're going to go ahead and stun them with our unstoppable stuns. This one in the back is probably going to be the main one that you always want to get just because he has the easiest line of sight on you. Again, Golden Gun puts him to bed pretty quickly. And the nice thing about running the Celestial Nighthawk is if you kill an enemy with Celestial Nighthawk, you get 33% of the super energy back. So you get to use your Nighthawks actually quite frequently uh, when it comes to this room. Also going to have this other unstop on the right, so you want to be careful with that. Quick uh, stun into a Nighthawk will put him to bed nice and quickly. Uh, unfortunately, that Nighthawk didn't one-shot the Ogre, but still brought him down to pretty much 1 HP, so he dies pretty quickly. Then as the Invis Hunter, it's my job to kind of run in here and come and pick up this Purified Light. So we can go ahead and progress the encounter. Just need one more. Uh, we're about 10 minutes into the strike itself right now, so we're going pretty quick. Um, like I said, this uh, team composition is a good mix of reliability, safety, um, and speed. Which is why I love running the Double Nighthawk so much. Um... And I kind of wanted to run the Double Nighthawk for this guy specifically, just so you guys didn't have to watch an unnecessarily long video. Um, you'll get by just fine if you do have a Well of Radiance Warlock, though, as opposed to two Nighthawks. Um, but I definitely like bringing at least one. Just makes things feel really, really... Uh, makes them feel a lot faster. Um, as the Invis Hunter as well, if you have finishable enemies in here, since you're running Echo of Obscurity, assuming you went ahead and heeded my recommendations, uh, you can kind of run in here and be ultra-aggressive, because if you use your finisher on enemies, that'll of course uh, make you invis um, 
it's basically like a free invisibility cooldown. So as you can see here, I'm kind of running in, playing significantly more aggressive to try and plop my tether down, make these enemy waves spawn a little bit more quickly. Anytime I see a spawn, that's kind of my cue to get back to my team and reassess the situation, just to make sure that I'm not putting myself in a dangerous position. Because like I said, if I get caught out, uh, there's not really a reliable way for my teammates to run in there and get my res because I'm the end of this player. They don't have any of this cooldowns. So they're not able to get in there as easily. So we're going to go ahead, continue to drop these enemies. I'm going to try and get my teammate in this so he can get in there and get his Nighthawk off. And from here, I'll probably go ahead and throw my grenade. As you can see, the right side of the arena here is pretty clear. So I'm confident and comfortable to kind of push in a little bit more. Um, and I'm getting beamed by some of the enemies though. So we play a little safer. Gonna try and drop this barrier knight really, really quickly. Got the blistered wizard out of there as well. And uh, another thing to note is that for the third wave, the champion will actually be the enemy that will drop the third captured light. So you can go ahead and pick up that third captured light. Uh, this will not despawn the enemies. So after you pick up that third captured light, you will still have some enemies to take down. So for example, this barrier knight we obviously want to kill because we want platinum and because we have to kill it. But um, once you pick up the third purified light, that's kind of your cue to send the rest of the team in and start chipping away at everything else. Um, be pretty good to go. Um, on the Occasionally you'll have maybe a boomer knight that's hiding somewhere, but once you have every single enemy dead, you can run up this well, dunk the discharge lights, and then you can pick up this heavy crate to refresh. Uh, I think it only gives 25% of your heavy ammo. It does not give you all of your heavy ammo, so you don't want to go loose cannon with your heavy during that encounter because you're not going to get a full recharge when you pick up that crate. So I like to end up with like four rockets or something like that um, by the time I'm done with that encounter. Once you get to the boss right here, I actually just stay back and I plink away at him from these stairs. That was probably the worst tether of all time. Uh, try to actually land your tether on him next time if you do that. Um, but the reason I like to stay back at the stairs is because if he throws his shields, you can just crouch and hang back here. And the shields will track uh, to the ground above you rather than tracking to, um, tracking to you specifically. So we can just hide right here. It makes things a lot safer. Um, you only need to get this guy to about 80% HP, 85% HP, and then the Psyops, Scions, will go ahead and take control of him and send you into the boss realm. Currently at about 14 minutes on the run right now. Oop, apparently I just took a bunch of damage for some random reason. I don't really know why. Um, but then you'll get to this part. If anyone on your team has any supers at this point, I recommend popping them before you start the encounter, because if you look at my super meter, starting the encounter will immediately pull out the boss. Once you start it, you'll have your Nighthawk Hunters pop their Nighthawks immediately and blast the boss to try and take out a large chunk of his initial health, which feels really, really good. And the number one thing I want to recommend for this particular encounter is that when the boss is in his shield throwing form, you want your entire team to be crouched and sitting at the back of the platform. What this does is it makes it, it, it makes the boss's shields hit the lip of the platform, which makes it impossible for the shields to actually hit you. The problem is if you're standing at the front of the platform, the shields will actually track you and hit you. And the problem is that if all three uh, of the players on your fire team are standing on this back, back platform, if one of the shields hits you, it'll ricochet off that player and kill the rest of the team. So make sure that all three of your players, if there is one thing to take away from this video, it is this. Make sure all three of your players understand that when the boss is in his shield throwing form, everyone is at the back of the platform crouched. Um, you can play a little loose cannon with this as well. So like when he peeks out, um, if he's not in the process of throwing the shields, if you like get really comfortable with the timing on it, um, you can you know, squeak out a little bit of extra damage. But if you want the safest possible strategy, the safest possible strategy is if he is glowing purple and he has the shields on his wrists, you do not under any circumstance stand at the tippy top of this plate. He uh, is very shy. So you'll kind of have to take whatever opportunities you can, shoot his leg, things of that nature. 
Um, but you'll whittle him down to two thirds HP. That will spawn the first aspect of Savathun and an Unstoppable Ogre. First thing you want to do is laser the Unstoppable Ogre. So the Unstoppable Ogre will spawn in the very back of the room. He'll slowly but surely make his way up to us. If you have your Nighthawks uh, available at this time, you can use them to go ahead and nuke the Unstoppable Ogre. Or you can just go ahead and shoot rockets at him. Will work just fine as well. Once that Unstoppable Ogre is dead, you have two options here. The safest option is for only the Invis Hunter player to run up and get the spear. If you want to be as safe as humanly possible, that is the plan you want to go with. If you want to make things a little bit faster, however, if you have the Omnioculus Hunter, you can have them make the entire fire team Invis so that the entire fire team can walk up and grab the spear, which will make killing the aspect of Sabaton significantly quicker. Um, obviously, on the Oculus, for those who don't know, whenever you make an ally invisible, you get 50% of your smoke bomb back. So if you make two allies invisible, you get the entire thing back. So it makes it so that you, as the as the entire fire team, you can all run up and grab the spear. The only things to note is to, one, be diligent about making sure that you're re-invising your team, and two, to understand that only one person can pick up the spear at a time. So if you're all three trying to grab it at the same time, it'll only go to one person, and then the other two players will have to re-attempt to grab it. So I recommend just kind of being patient, picking it up one at a time. Um, another thing to note for this section is that the boss will, on occasion, get in range to be able to shoot you with the arc blast. They're pretty easy to dodge, so don't be too worried about them. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I also want to talk about movement with this uh, with the synaptic spear when we get into the next set of lights in terms of like how I'm blinking with it because that is definitely another important part of using the synaptic spear for this and being as safe as humanly possible and getting the most out of every spear since the ammo does deplete not only when you throw it but also based on time. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit when we get to the next set of synaptic spears. For now though, like I said, boss is going to be very, very shy. He's only going to peek out at certain times, so just be extremely patient. You'll have your opportunity. And this is exactly why I recommended using Wish Ender over Arbalist. One, you get the anti-barrier, so when he puts up his little Hive Guardian shield, it doesn't really matter. You can shoot right through it because you have anti-barrier. And two, um, the infinite ammos on the Wish Ender are a godsend here because it makes it so that you never have to walk back into the arena to go and pick up special ammo. You always have ammo no matter what to be able to shoot through his shield, to be able to shoot him from a distance, and do a sizable chunk of damage as well, I might say. And now that he's in his shield throwing form, I'm going to make sure I'm kind of positioned at the back of the plate. If I saw the shields coming directly at me, then I was going to make sure to crouch so that they don't actually make it to us and ricochet and kill every single player. But we're just going to continuously, slowly but surely chip away at his HP bar. Like I said, he is a little shy. So you do kind of have to wait for him to give you the opportunities to poke him down. So right here, we hopefully should be able to phase him to one third, which we are right there. And I'm going to have my teammates stay on this initial plate for a brief moment while I show you guys the movement tech with the synaptic spear. Um, if... Uh, first thing you should probably do is kill the unstop directly in mid so we can go ahead and blast it with unstop and nail it with rockets and things of that nature. Um, I kind of like to save the Nighthawks here for the boss, so I don't like using the Nighthawks on the Ogre. But as you can see, this left one is pretty much always going to be in range to blast you with the Arc Blast. As you can see, they are not particularly hard to avoid. The way I like to avoid them is I like her to shoot a ton of them and then I start moving because they take a long time to travel all the way to you. I'm going to leave my teammates back there for now. And while they're back there, honestly, the number one thing I recommend that they do is chip away at all these enemies on the left side. Meanwhile, I want to show you guys the synaptic spear. Um, if you press the grenade button while holding the synaptic spear, that is what allows you to do that blink ability. It lets you to move. Uh, it allows you to move around the map significantly more quickly. So you can grab the synaptic spear, do a blink back to the central platform really, really fast. And that is going to allow you to get the most out of your spear uh, because it's, of course, going to uh, get you back there as quickly as humanly possible so that you're not going to have that ammo drain over time. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go invis again. Go ahead, grab the next spear. I'll go ahead and make my teammates invisible so that they can get some spears. Once again, you do not have to have the full fire team run over and grab spears if you don't want to. It just makes things a little bit quicker. We are going to do it in this run here just to make the video, uh, you know, a little less lengthy. 
uh, so we're not wasting any of your time you're just watching it right here and uh yeah so now i am out of invis cooldown so i'm gonna run over to this acolyte and to the dodge right next to him so i can get my dive back both of my teammates invisible we're all gonna run back up and grab this enough spear and uh, apparently get blasted by the other Sabathun. That was probably a little risky um, doing our initial advance onto the Synaptic Spear without invisibility, because what we did was we aggroed the other Sabathun clone on the right side, which is what made us get blasted uh, by her arc blasts on our way to pick up the Synaptic Spear. So uh, learn from my mistakes. What you pretty much always want to do is make sure you have invisibility as you're going in to get the Synaptic Spear so that the other Sabathun clone is going to be shooting at you as you run up uh, to get it. So this should probably be the final Synaptic Spear that I'll grab, um, and that'll probably be enough to kill this one on the left. Once you kill the Sabathun clone on the left, what I like to do is I like to bring my entire fire team over to the left side of the arena. And so I'll drop that Synaptic Spear. I'm going to clean up any of the Acolytes that are remaining over here on the left side of the arena. Going to make sure I clear out the Moth as well and you're pretty safe over here on occasion you'll have some acolytes spawn underneath you as you can see we are having right here um, but they're not too dangerous as long as you're keeping an eye out for them so as you can see when they spawn i'm just kind of diverting my attention from the sabathun clone and making sure that i focus on these acolytes that are over here so get a finisher on this one i have a moth as well that i want to make sure i take care of so it doesn't uh, blow up on me. Also got a wizard over there. This is where the disorienting grenades can once again come in handy big time. Shoot the disorienting grenades at the wizard. The wizard is basically not allowed to touch you. Um, just makes things super safe over here. Just really, really nice. And your full fire team can sit here and just chuck synaptic spears all the way across the map to get the right side projection. Pretty easy. The very second that we kill the right side projection, I'm going to go ahead and tether where the boss is going to come, and my teammates are going to pop their Nighthawks and instantly blast the boss. Also going to shoot some rockets right there. It just gets a huge chunk of damage on it. And then immediately after that, we're going to go ahead and make our way back to the central platform to get completely safe. I'm going to try and get my teammates safe right here with Invis. I was a little too late. Um, that's on me. But we're instantly going to make our way back to this platform and be super safe. However, the only time that I don't really like being on this platform is if the boss is over on this top right section because it does give him a little bit of a high ground advantage on you. So in the situation where the boss is on the right side, what I'll do is I'll kind of hide right here so that I'm behind the pillar and he doesn't have a line of sight on me. And I'm going to take my teammate, we're going to make him invis, and we're actually going to go and re-rotate over to the left side of the arena. So I'm going to run over here res my teammate make both of us invis and then we're going to actually occupy the left side of the arena because we just have a lot of space to work with here and the boss isn't really going to target us while we're over here and even if he does we have plenty of room to hide from his shield pros only thing to be worried about over here is there is going to be a wizard on this far left side and obviously you'll have to add some middle uh, but it's pretty easy to clean them up on occasion you'll have some acolytes that will push towards you uh, but it's not too bad you can run the risk of staying on the initial platform if you like. Like I said, the only reason I don't like doing that when the boss is over on this right side is because it gives him a high ground angle on your fire team and it makes it so that it's not as reliable to dodge those shields by standing at the back of the arena. So once the boss gets really low, uh, since I have invis cooldowns, I'm comfortable to play a little bit more aggressively with him, can run up, smash his ghost, and that is literally, it was about a 24 minute run, but do not feel bad whatsoever if your run takes 40, 45, even 50 minutes this is definitely one of the more tedious grandmaster nightfalls but with this strategy i'm confident that you can absolutely smash it with safety and ease which is the entire point of this guide if it helped please do me a favor consider liking the video subscribing to the channel so you can see more upcoming grandmaster nightfall guides and build guides thank you so much for watching and as always have a great day